So for the last few days, I've been testing shade tolerant solar panels, specifically the Renogy Shadow Flux. And these are 200 watt solar panels. And they're up against a traditional bifacial solar panel that is not shade tolerant. So if I shade any of those cells, the output will decrease drastically. And a lot of people on boats want to see if these are worth the money. So I created a fake mast, but then I realized that the sun really goes pretty far right now. So I created a second mast with a pole. And in the morning, we have severe shading with this wall. And then in the afternoon, we have severe shading with that wall. So these panels have lots of shading all day, but does it make a difference? Is it worth it to spend more money on the shadow flux or to use a traditional panel? Panel like the one behind me. And how good is this shadow? It covers most of the panel. It's not the entire thing, it's just partial shading, but this is the situation that a lot of people face. And this is an hour later, so you can see that second pole is starting to shade the panel as well. Now this is a larger panel, so this one's actually being shaded less than the shadow flux. Shadow flux is in an extreme disadvantage. The only advantage that this has is that it's a bifacial panel. So that means it can absorb radiation from the backside and convert that to electricity. And a lot of people are using these now, but this is not an N-type panel. So it doesn't have the high efficiency like the shadow flux. But will this actually produce more? Let's go in the lab and find out. And here are the numbers that I recorded with my Victron solar charge controllers. And at the bottom, you have the peak sun hours for each day for each panel. And on the first day, it was cloudy, but I still got 10.19% increase with the Renogy Shadow Flux. Next, on day two, it was very sunny, and the Renogy Shadow Flux won again, and it produced 9.05% more. Next, on day three, we had some clouds, but it wasn't diffusing the light, like on the first day, when it was very cloudy. It was just white, fluffy clouds, and they were passing over some time. And the Renogy Shadow Flux again won by 4.53%. Now on the fourth day, it was sunny again, and we got 9.03% more with the Renogy Shadow Flux, which matches day two by 0.02%, which is incredible. Now I was expecting more because I tried my best to shade the heck out of those panels. That's early morning shading and late afternoon shading with the large walls on both sides. Poles were shading it for half the day because I only had one panel hooked up for each array. Because with two panels, I would max out my Victron Solar Charge Controller. So I had to put one on each one. So for half the day it was shaded and half the day it was not, which is pretty realistic. If you have an RV air conditioner and shading one side of your panel and the other side is still getting good sunshine, I thought this was a perfect test. And it also acts as like a mast on a sailboat. And with all that said, we got four to 10% more. So if you can afford it and you're very space constrained and you need that last 10%, then by all means do it. It does work if you have severe shading. But keep in mind that most solar panels in a series string already have this shade tolerance. If one of your solar panels is shaded, it will bypass itself and the rest will still produce power. Having bypass diodes at the cell level is really cool. I think it's neat but it's not gonna offer that many advantages for a large system, even if it's mobile. A lot of people were saying on my first video, they were like, Will, this is complete game changer. I was producing no power before. And going by my test results, I don't agree with that. I think that you need less shading if you want more energy. No amount of bypass diodes in one panel or a cell, like in the Ranagy Shadow Flux, will make up for a lack of light. And I know with mobile systems, a lot of people are discouraged because their panels are usually more flat because it's on the roof of a vehicle or it's on a boat and in the late afternoon and early morning their system is completely shaded and they're like why do I have this system if it's not producing power but understand that most of the production is when the sun is above 45 degrees from the horizon when the sun is directly overhead you're producing most of your day's generation and I think the best use case is if you were at that peak irradiance level at midday and half of your panel is severely shaded not diffuse light at all, but entirely covered, then this thing will produce a lot more. I think one useful application is if you have large leaves and they're large enough to cover an entire cell and you have these leaves on every single panel and they're covering it midday when you have peak irradiance. I think in that situation, these would be fantastic. This might be the only solution in that situation. Now, if you're using traditional solar panels, they have the same technology as this, but it's at the panel level, not the cell level. So if you have partial shading with most systems, it's totally fine. 
your panel will bypass itself and the rest will continue to work. Also, some people said that if you had dirt on the panel that this would help. I don't think so. If you have dirty panels, whether you use this or a traditional panel, your production numbers will be down in the same amount. These cells are not special, okay? It's only how they are being bypassed. No amount of shade tolerant technology will make up for a lack of sunlight. If you have less sunshine, you're gonna have less production. Now, one benefit of this panel is it's an in-type solar cell and it has a better efficiency than most of the others, but it's like by two or 3% more. Most panels, even the cheap ones, have fantastic efficiency for the money. And the one that I tested this against is not an in-type, but you can get an in-type high efficiency panel for half the price of this thing. Or you could get a bifacial panel if you can mount it properly, which is not applicable to mobile systems. This is more for stationary systems. But if you have good sunlight, the bifacial panel will again cost half as much and you can get bifacial gain, which can give you another 10 to 20% depending on the environment. Now I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer, all right? This is a very cool technology. And if you have certain situations and you have a lot of money and you want that extra five to 10%, by all means go for it. But in my opinion, the majority of people will benefit by getting more solar panels on their system, especially when the sun is directly overhead. And when the sun is directly overhead, typically you have less shading. If you have an RV air conditioner, check your shading when the sun is right overhead and when you have peak production. It might not be that bad, but I do understand that it's very discouraging for people when for half the morning and half the afternoon, their entire system is shaded. But the production is awful at those times. So what matters most is when the sun is overhead, remove the shading at that time and you'll increase your production figures. There's lots of cool technologies. I mean, sun power cells are incredible. The output has been amazing. Like the STC and peak has been better than this in my testing. And Renogy sells panels with those cells but they do cost more. As much as I like some really cool technology in solar, some of it costs so much that it just doesn't justify it. Now, if you are extremely space constrained and you have lots of money, then by all means, go get this thing. I don't care. But I want people to be realistic with their expectations. A lot of people think, oh, I'm not producing anything, now I am. I don't think so. You should check your numbers and do a test. When I made my first video, some people mentioned the boat mast argument. I was like, oh my God, that's so true. That's such a good idea because it's gonna block most of it. The panel's gonna shut down on the other one and they'll have no production. But the more I thought about it and the more I saw test results, I was like, okay, it's more nuanced than that. There is a benefit, absolutely, but it more than double the cost of the other options. So again, it really depends on how much money you have. So it was a fun test. I thought I would get more because I did so much shading. I was like, oh, this is gonna be the best test on the internet. I'm gonna get 50, 70% more. It's gonna be amazing. But unfortunately, I didn't see it. I got four to 10%. There's a benefit, but it's at a price. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.